Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So in the previous video, we took a look at Intel's Core i3-10100 4-core 8-thread CPU and saw how that paired with something like an RX 6700 XT at low resolutions. And that did very well. All modern games, the high-end AAA single-player games, ran just fine on that $100-ish dollar CPU. So here today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a slightly older processor, the Ryzen 5 1600. This is a CPU a lot of you guys have or have had here recently. It's about four years old now, a little bit over four years old, but it's a six core, 12 thread CPU. And because of that, I specifically wanted to test this CPU to make sure that it's still running today's games well enough for you guys. So that's what we're gonna be taking a look at here today. Before we get into it, if you guys like videos like this, please make sure you smash that like button. It really tells YouTube that this is a good video and they can go ahead and promote it. It's really the best way to get the videos out there. And I really do thank you all for that. If you wanna support the channel even further, you can click the little link down below. It says join, you can become a member over here at the good old gamer, gets you discord access. You can also jump over to Patreon, which there's a link in the description down below, gets you all that stuff stuff as well, Discord access, the After Hours podcast, and you can go ahead and ask questions every single week on the Techonomics podcast. And there is a new button. It's a thanks button. It's like a super chat type of thing. If you just want to tip, if you really like these videos and you just want to help out, help fund the next video, you can just go ahead and drop a couple bucks there. And I really do appreciate all of you guys for your support. All right, so with that out of the way, you guys should be pretty familiar with how this test setup goes, but I'm gonna run through the test specs first and the methodology. So first of all, all games are being run at 1080p. Now, ironically enough, even with something like the i3-10100, we saw that we were GPU limited with a 6700 XT, even at 1080p. So that tells us that that CPU has more than enough horsepower to drive that CPU. So a lot of you guys kind of notice that you're like, you're hitting GPU limitations. Yeah, that's a good thing. That means that that CPU is performing the maximum that that GPU can really do. And that's even under unrealistic circumstances. Nobody should be using a 6700 XT for 1080p gaming. It's a 1440p or a 4K gaming card. So yeah, that's that's actually a good sign. So if you guys do see that the GPU utilization is hitting 100%, that's our goal. We want to make sure that these CPUs can handle these graphics cards. And yeah, like I said, in the last video, we saw that. So you can keep an eye out here. Uh, all games are run using ultra settings because realistically, with this type of GPU, you're going to be wanting to run higher ultra settings on such a graphics card. So I'm trying to use more of a, instead of a completely unrealistic scenario, a more realistic scenario. That's the reason why I went with that. All right, so now on to the star of the show. That is the Ryzen 5 1600, base clock of 3.2 gigahertz, and the boost clock of 3.6. Now, the Zen 1 CPUs, their boosting mechanisms were a little bit weird, and honestly, this is a chip that you should overclock. So that's what we did. We actually are running this overclocked up to 3.8 gigahertz, as like 99% of Ryzen 1600 should be able to hit 3.8 no problem. I didn't push it any further because that then you're starting to get into, you know, bin territory. 3.8 should be achievable by all Ryzen 1600s. And as in all the rest of the benchmarks, this is paired with the MSI Mech 2 RX 6700 XT 12 gigabyte GPU for all of the reasons I mentioned before. So we can compare the numbers directly between the i3 and the i5. For the motherboard, I chose a Gigabyte B550 MDS3H. Uh, I found a really good deal on this over on eBay, 50 bucks, and I chose B450 because it sports Zen 1 through Zen 3. So I needed a board that I could use multiple different CPUs on. Uh, I personally have a B550 board, which doesn't technically support Zen 1 or Zen Plus. So that's the reason why I chose this particular board. For the RAM, Kingston provided us 32 gigabytes, DDR4, 3200, CL16. For the last video, I'm just moving that over. So this way we're keeping consistent. So that's the memory that we're using. They also provided a one terabyte NVMe SSD PCIe Gen 3, the KC2500. We're going to be using that as well. So this way it's apples to apples between these two systems. And that'll do it for the tech specs. If you want to see the rest of them, they are listed in the description below. If you're interested in checking any of this stuff out, there are affiliate links there that does help support the channel if you want to go ahead and pick any of this stuff up yourself. So, alrighty guys, now with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the benchmarks. 
All right, so kicking things off as usual with Metro Exodus, we see that the Ryzen 5 1600 is doing very well. This game actually just runs very well. Uh, even on something like the i5 2500K, it ran very, very well. So this is a well-optimized system here. We have an average frame rate coming in at 112 FPS with a 1% low of 82. So that's very, very solid right there. In comparison, the i3-10-100 came in at 121 FPS and 94 on the 1% low. So it's a little bit slower than the i3-10-100, but not by a whole lot. Next up, the heavy hitter, Cyberpunk 2077. Of course, it always starts off looking real good here when we're pulling out of the driveway. But uh, yeah, as things go on, things get heavier. The Ryzen 5 1600 comes in with an average FPS of 73 with a 1% low of 54, which is very respectable. 60 FPS, definitely doable on this older CPU. And then compared to the i3-10100, that came in at 75 FPS average, and once again, 54 FPS on the 1% low. So virtually the same between the two CPUs. Next up, we move over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a super CPU heavy section. Uh, I mean, if you guys have ever tested this, you'll know that this will crush a lot of CPUs. But the Ryzen 5 1600 does very well, coming in with an average FPS of 85 and a 1% low of 56. So once again, smooth 60 FPS gaming experience with VRR is going to be perfectly playable on this CPU. The i3-10100 in comparison came in at 95 FPS average and 58 FPS on the 1% low. So a little bit higher on the average, but the 1% low virtually the same. So the next game tested is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And this game right here running very well. We can see with the Ryzen 1600, we're getting 92 FPS on average and a 1% low of 58. So once again, very respectable, 60 FPS locked if you want it essentially. And in comparison to the i3-10100 that came in at 109 FPS and 63 FPS on the 1% low. So this is kind of the anomaly here. The i3-10100 did exceptionally well at this test. And I even compared it to my i5-11400. And just kind of a spoiler alert, the i5-11400 came in at 95 FPS on average and 65 FPS on the 1% low. So the 10100 is actually faster than the 11400 in this particular benchmark. So this is definitely a win for the i3. Now, why that's happening, I don't know but it's substantially faster than either Rocket Lake or Zen 1. So just might be supremely optimized for the Skylake architecture. All right, and last up, we have Watch Dogs Legion, the Ryzen 5 1600 coming in at a very respectable 71 FPS average, but the 1% low coming in at 51 is a little disconcerting. So that is a little bit low. So this is definitely a game where you're gonna want VRR to smooth out those little frame dips there. Now it's not too far away, perfectly playable. Anything 50 FPS, plus on the 1% low with VRR, which is FreeSync and G-Sync, uh, in my opinion, is perfectly playable when you're shooting for a 60 FPS average. In comparison, the i3-10100 came in at 70 FPS on average, so slightly slower, but with 53 FPS on the 1% low, which is basically a tie. So they're basically tied on this one. Now, taking a look at these benchmarks overall, we can see that the Ryzen 5 1600 comes in with an average FPS of 87, with 1% low of 60, the i3-10100 comes in with an average FPS of 94 and 64, respectively. So these are very, very close. The Ryzen 5 1600 is about 7.5% slower on the average FPS and about 6% slower on the 1% lows. So looking at these numbers, it's very clear that the i3-10100 is basically on par with the Ryzen 5 1600. It's actually technically slightly faster, but... We're talking seven, six, seven percent. It's not a big deal. It's almost margin of error there, guys. So overall, I'd say that they're basically equivalent. Now, what this says is, well, the i3-10100 is fantastic. <laughs> that, that's the first takeaway that we should have from this. But the Ryzen 5 1600 is also fantastic. It's like a four and a half year old CPU now, and it's running modern games just fine. Now, not only does this demonstrate that the Ryzen 5 1600 is still good, what it also demonstrates is how good $100 four core eight thread CPUs are here today. The i3-10100 or the i3-10105, I hate that number, but that's the 2021 version. It's 100 megahertz faster. It's not going to be too much different. Um, but those CPUs are pretty much all you need for this type of stuff. Steve from Hardware Unbox has been getting asked a lot of times about like core count, like you need this many cores to run games. 
if the, the cores are smaller, if you have less cores, but they're faster, it will match more cores that are slower. So in this case, this is a perfect example to demonstrate that. These two CPUs are relatively identical and they do the thing very well. Now, yes, in the future, you may need to upgrade these CPUs by going with a B450 platform or like I use the H410 on the i3-10100. Those both support eight core 16 thread CPUs and beyond. So you have an upgrade path for either of these systems. So you might as well save the money. If you are looking to build a PC here today, go with one of these less expensive CPUs and then invest that extra money into your GPU because they are way expensive right now. And then in time when you need more CPU horsepower, you can just simply go and get it. The only reason why I'd recommend buying a Ryzen 5 1600 today is if you want a cheap Zen based CPU and then you plan on upgrading later on. It is a CPU that'll do the trick today, but it is starting to get a little long in the tooth. The i3-10100 or 10105, it is snappier within Windows. That's something a lot of people noticed from going from Zen or Zen Plus to Zen 2. The higher IPC really does help out on little things. So personally, I would probably recommend going with the i3 as they're typically cheaper than the 1600s. And yes, the upgrade path isn't quite as good. You can only go up to a 10 core, but honestly, most people are probably just going to go to an eight core anyway in the future. But regardless, it's your guys call. Both CPUs are great. And if you have anything that's that good or better, you're good to go, boys. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to upgrade. You do not need a 5950X to play video games. That's probably the ultimate point of these videos. Spending that kind of money to play video games on a CPU. You can do it if you want to. I'll put affiliate links down below. You know, you feel free, you know, just click that, buy it. That, that's cool. That's cool. You can do it if you want to. I just simply don't recommend it. Well, already, guys, I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you have a Ryzen 1600? Are you planning on keeping it? Uh, were you planning on upgrading? And now maybe you're like, yeah, I mean, I'll see how much longer I can get out of it. I want to hear your thoughts down there. And if you like videos like this, once again, please smash that like button. YouTube's being really hard on the smaller tech channels right now, uh, just because there's not a lot of positive news out there uh, at this point in time. So I really appreciate all your guys' support there. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. Catch you guys in the next video.